Hi everyone, I'm Luke Hector and this is the Broken Meeple, a show where I devote my time to raving and ranting about board games, but usually more of the ranting part. This is a weird one today because talk about a game that we didn't really feel like we needed. This is Lord of the Rings, The Duel from Middle Earth. Asmodee has the Lord of the Rings license and basically, well, you gotta make a game now. Seven Wonders Duel, which is the one that it's based on, is one of my favourite games of all time. This has been in my top 10, or like off my top 100, on frequent occasions, and you know, who knows it will be there in the next sitting. But when it comes to two player only games, it is difficult to top this one. And I purposely have, you know, the solo PNP expansion if I want to play it solo. But for two players, I've got the insert, I've got coins, I've sleeved it, and base game or with Pantheon is the way to play this game. I'm sorry, but the Agora expansion was just not that interesting and too fiddly and faffy. But this one stays on my shelf and I love it when I can bring this one out. So when I heard this was being announced, which is essentially a re-implementation of Seven Wonders Duel, except they're using the Lord of the Rings license and using Vincent Dutrait's artwork, but the designers are still the same. It's still Anton Balzer and Bruno Kafala. I gotta admit I kind of rolled my eyes a little bit because you already have one of the best two player games that there is. What is there to improve on? What is there to change? And why are you doing this in the first place? I mean, are you doing this just to cash grab on a license or was there a legit reason you needed to make a re-implementation? Can you have both side by side? I think you already know the answer to this one. So I guess you gotta pick one. So, well, you already know I love this one to bits. Question is, is this one in fact better? Fools. So if you've already played Seven Wonders Door, you already know 95% of the rules in this game. But just in case you've never had the chance to play that classic, then here's how it goes. There are a pattern of cards set out over three rounds, and each round has a slightly different pattern. Essentially, the cards are laid out so that some of them are face up and some of them are face down. In the first round, you create a kind of pyramid structure, and then in the second and third round, it kind of changes. But the idea is, is that you take it in turns to open draft one of these cards. So you've got to pick one at the bottom, that's revealed up. You take it and resolve its effects. The color of the card did takes what it actually does. Now as cards that are face down become available they flip over and thus open up more choices for the opponent. So it's a little bit of a sort of pushing back pushing back and forth build of like right well I don't want to give my opponent too many choices but I also want to see what's there. So there's you know and if I don't want to give them choices is it worth taking that card instead of this one. There's all that sort of thought process going on. But the idea is, is that when you go through each round, you'll then reset the cards into a different pattern, do it again, and then reset them and do a third round. But as you're going through, the cards will have different effects. You have the, the ring card, which moves Frodo and Sam along this like weird little track here via this like sort of plastic overlay on top. But if you are the Sauron player, it's moving the Nazgul behind them. And the idea is, is that if the Nazgul catch up with Frodo, then the Sauron player automatically wins. And if Frodo gets to the Mount Doom and throws the ring in, then the Fellowship player automatically wins. It's basically one is Sauron and one is uh, you know, the Fellowship. The green ones are symbols. So they have symbols from the different races like elves, dwarves and the Ents and stuff. And when you collect um, pairs of these or three, or three different ones, you essentially get to look at these tokens and there's three for each race. They all have some special ability on them and essentially you choose which one you like out of a, you know, a selection of them and you know, trigger the ability. But there's also the auto win condition that if you happen to get six of the symbols that are different symbols, then you automatically win by rallying the races against each other. So so you've got two auto win conditions right there. But if one of those isn't met by the end of the game, you essentially win by way of an area control mechanic. So you have a board here and throughout the game, you will be placing units on the various uh, spaces. Occasionally, you will be able to buy these fortress cards or uh, well, tiles, which have a fairly high prerequisite and they give you some cool bonus. But the main reason is that they put fortresses on the table so that they can help you control areas better. And the idea is, is that should you happen to have presence in all seven regions, it's another auto win condition. But if you get through to the end of the third round and nobody's done an auto win condition, then you look at who's got the most area control out of all these lands and then that player wins. In the previous game, it was essentially the military track, which is now this Frodo track, the science symbols, which is basically what these race symbols are. And instead of an area control mechanic, you had victory points. In order to power these cards, you're going to need money, which comes in a much more scarce format in this version, and you're going to need resources. The resources are printed on these grey cards, and as you take one, you have access to the resource from that point on. These aren't resource tokens, 
You essentially have a cost on the card, and if you have the resource cards in front of you, you can play that card. But if you don't have the resource, you essentially have to pay a coin for every resource that you're missing. But of course, there are yellow cards to get you more money, and different effects on other cards besides, as well as little bonuses on the Frodo track, or perhaps some cool bonus with these race tokens. So essentially, that's the game. Play through three rounds of this open drafting, see if you can win by one of the free auto win conditions, or if that all fails, then try to win by area control. Stupid fat hobbit. Pretty simple rules, and if you've played Seven Wonders Duel, then you already know most of these rules are very similar to the other one. In fact, there's not a huge amount of difference overall. The main differences that arise is you have these fortress tiles, which you didn't have before. These are effectively the same as buying a card. They've just got much bigger costs. They put fortresses on the area control map, and they give you a special bonus, but this is a side thing. You didn't have this one before. You also now have an area control mechanic. Now, in the base set of of the Seven Wonders Door. You didn't have any area control to think about, but Agora put in this weird little Senate system with a similar mechanic. But now you actually do have an area control mechanic, which replaces the victory points. So victory points no longer exist in this game in any way, shape or form. It's all based on those three different conditions and then effectively the tiebreaker for area control if none of those are met. But otherwise the game pretty much plays as the other one does. I mean, the Frodo track and the Nazgul track is basically just a glorified version of the military track. It's exactly the same. The sciences are, frankly, almost exactly the same as well. I mean, the same premise, you're trying to get multiple symbols, and if you get two of a kind, you get a cool bonus. The only difference here is that with the science tokens, you had so many in the game, and you just flipped one at ran and you knew what they were, and you picked one. Well, here, you now have effectively six trios of these markers, so effectively like 18 of them present, and depending on which faction symbols you got, you will be able to look at so many of that particular faction, and they have special abilities, usually, you know, related to that particular race, like the dwarfs might be good at building stuff, for example, but generally it's, you know, pretty much the science symbols again. So, if you like Seven Wonders Duel, you're gonna like this, and that's kind of the weird thing about this review, because at the end of the day, this is a fantastic game. But that's because Seven Wonders Duel was already a fantastic game. You've essentially made pretty much the same game. So it's not like you can hate one and love the other. That's physically impossible. You just cannot possibly do that. So it's pretty much just a case of picking your poison for whether you like area control versus victory points and whether you like the, you know, the original sort of clean artwork of Seven Wonders Duel with their with their cards or you like Vincent Dutrait's artwork with Lord of the Rings. Now in terms of the theme, it's pretty pasted on because, well, all you've done is just basically put a Nazgul chasing Frodo on a track, which literally could be anything. We already had a military track that was literally just the tug of war effect. And, you know, these green tokens with that, well, we literally just had it with science tokens. And area control, area control can literally be anything. So, yes, it's got the Lord of the Rings license, but other than pretty pictures, it doesn't mean a bugger all, really. But for the uninitiated, the game is still great fun, just like its predecessor is. This open draft mechanic is super simple, super smooth, and yet it's filled with a good amount of tension for deciding whether I want to take the card I want or I'm focused more on denying the opponent the card they want, because both are legit plays and things that you need to bear in mind. It's all well and good saying I'm going to go for all the greens and that's my strategy. The cards might not come out in a way that suits that, and even then, you might be scrabbling so hard trying to get the greens, the opponent's already like got to Mount Doom and throw the ring in. So you've already got that little issue there. But you know, all the different choices that you have with the cards based on when they come out. You don't see every card in the game, so there may be one or two less of a particular type. You don't know that. And because half of them are effectively face up and half of them are effectively face down, you don't know the full extent of the placement of those cards. So you do have to almost kind of push your luck in some aspects, but you're also, you know, that's, you know, how much of a risk do you want to take? I'm going to take this card here. It's a science card. Fantastic. I get a bonus by having two of the pipes. I now get a cool token. But by doing that, I reveal two cards. And I haven't seen many blues out. If the opponent gets a blue, that's really going to hurt me on this track. So you have to bear those things in mind. But a couple of things do detract this version, I think, from its predecessor. I'm not a fan of removing the victory points and replacing it with this area control mechanic. Because the area control mechanic is 
not that interesting really you've just got a bunch of little bits there with you know a couple of pieces that you shove on them and they're connected by lines that's literally it when you take a red card you put so many of them in the region and you might have some other effects and tokens and uh, and this track that allow you to put more stuff in there but other than that it's a very plain looking map of middle earth and middle earth's got all these cool this cool stuff in it and it's just a beige bland map you know nothing really much to it and nobody ever wins by area control, like seven presence regions or anything. So the auto win condition for it might as well not even exist. I have tried to gun for that auto win condition before and it just never happens because it's too easy for people to kill each other off. A couple of other things also work me with this military track as well because the the military track in the old game was a tug of war. So you, you know, when you took the red set, when you took the red sword, you moved forward. But if they did it, they moved back, and it was basically constantly tug of war. But you got points depending on how far you tugged it back, and there was the auto win condition. Well, here you get the occasional bonus based on where you are. But there's two things that I'm not a fan of with this. Firstly. There's no tug of war in it. It's a race mechanic because it's basically got this like plastic overlay here. So it starts off at the beginning. Now, if the fellowship move, they move the whole overlay one space. They are now one space close to the Mount Doom. Uh, the position of the Nazgul to, to Frodo though, doesn't change. So if the Nazgul player gets a couple of movement, they effectively move their little slider in here and they're closer to Frodo. But they're no further away from Frodo if Frodo moves closer to Mount Doom. So there's no longer any tug of war effort. It's just a race mechanic. And my God, do I hate this stupid plastic overlay thing. This overlay is a pain. It's fiddly as all get out because already you've got to put this slider in where it's like, you know, a little bit slanted in itself, like it sort of lops around a bit. But also it is too easy to nudge this thing. You are constantly like, right, I just got to be careful. Right, just move it to there. And all it takes is a tiny little nudge. And suddenly, you know, you've got Frodo in the wrong place or the Nazgul sliders like moved. And it's just like, I would have liked something a little bit more sturdy or we could have just had that tug of war mechanic back again. I don't know, but it would have been nice if maybe this little cardboard bit could have fit in the slider as well so that it could be nice and rigid, but it doesn't. It sits on top of the puzzle piece and there's just frankly too much wiggle room, not to mention it just slides around too much. From a component perspective, that's just kind of annoying just to make something like look all plasticky. Artwork wise, it still looks very beautiful. Although Vincent Dutre, is, is art style with me I think works better with scenery and you know nature than it does with people but I mean the artwork is still great it's gorgeous you I can take it or leave I mean it's literally do you like this artwork more than the other one pick your poison you know the theme doesn't matter at all but then there wasn't really much of a civilization theme in the previous one either so again that doesn't really matter so this is an odd review because at the end of the day both games are amazing you know this is a fantastic game as much as I, m I prefer the military track in the old version and prefer to have victory points rather than this area control mechanic those two little blemishes don't really detract from the fact that all the open drafting and the tension and the you know the the smooth gameplay and the different choices and routes you can take are all still present in this game but then they were already present in seven wonders duel so why exactly did this game need to be made pretty much with this game you are picking your poison in terms of artwork and theme you know i mean well actually even forget the theme i mean the other one barely feels like civilization this one barely feels like lord of the rings you are basically just deciding do you like victory points or do you like area control do you like a race or do you like a tug of war do you like vincent Trait's artwork or do you like uh, the other artwork from this one which i am slightly ashamed that i don't know who the artwork is uh miguel coimbra's artwork so you know both are great artists and both of them look great both of them are smooth, both of them are excellent, but where Seven Wonders Duel is a 10 out of 10 for me, this one's a 9 out of 10 for me. I still think it's a fantastic game and definitely one that you should grab if you have never played either of these two games. But you're picking your poison. Seven Wonders Duel, all of the rings Duel Middle Earth. You can't love one and hate the other. It's physically impossible, but everybody's going to have their preference over which one they prefer. For me, I prefer Seven Wonders Duel, but that's not a detraction from this one being, you know, a lesser game or, you know, a much, you know, or a bad game in any way. It's still a 9 out of 10. It is still excellent. I just prefer Seven Wonders overall, you know. Pick your poison. That's basically the summary here. Throw yourself in next time and rid us of your stupidity.
So that's it for me on this episode of The Broken Meeple. If you like what you see, then please thumb it up on YouTube and thumb it up on Board Game Geek when it goes live on the page. Check out the rest of the SN content I've been doing. There's a lot of good games and some mediocre games, but there's uh, plenty more to come soon. Eventually, I will get round to Unconscious Mind. That's going to be the next big review I do. But there's some expansion stuff to come and, of course, you know, more speed reviews as well. Until next time, remember, regardless of whether you prefer Civilization versus Lord of the Rings, it's still only a game, so grab one of these. You're going to have a hell of a time. Bye for now.